Have you ever experienced an accident that required immediate medical attention? If so, then you know that it is quite scary and stressful, especially if you didn't know what to do then, and medical assistance was not immediately available. This is the reason a basic knowledge in first aid is really important. Hi, I'm Miss Kate, and welcome to a fun and exciting health lesson about first aid basics. In today's video, we are going to talk about the principles of first aid, the roles and characteristics of good first aider, and the significance of first aid. But before we proceed, I want you to get your pen and paper to write down the important details of today's discussion. Ready? Let's go! Now, I want you to observe these pictures of situations that may have caused the usual minor accidents, such as accidentally cutting a finger with a sharp object or slipping from the hallway and being unable to move an arm, to name a few. What will you do if ever such emergency situation happens to you? Run or do first aid? Correct. Conduct first aid if ever such emergency happens to you. Do you think these kinds of incidents can be prevented? How? Yes, being careful. Why do you think is it important to act immediately when a person is injured? Correct, to prevent the situation from becoming worse. Many people get hurt or die every year because of insufficient and untimely medical assistance. People, regardless of age, encounter accidents. Some young people may be prone to accidents because they are very curious and eager to explore their environment. So they usually fail to avoid things or circumstances that may hurt or injure them. Accidents and injuries can happen all the time. So knowing how to save a person's life can really make a difference. Saving a life through first aid is a skill that everyone must learn. What is first aid? First aid is the initial, immediate, and temporary treatment given to the sick or injured person by a non-expert until medical assistance has arrived. The techniques in first aid range from basic to life-saving, and they can be managed with or without equipment. Let's trace the history of first aid first. On the 24th of June, 1859, a battle began in northern Italy, called the Battle of Solferino. After the battle, a young businessman from Geneva named Henry Dunant witnessed the suffering and agony brought about by this battle. He led the civilian people, especially the women and the girls, in assisting and caring for the wounded. He also helped establish temporary hospitals and secured necessary materials and supplies. He wrote a book titled A Memory in Solferino, which inspired the existence of the International Committee of the Red Cross, or ICRC, in 1863. By the way, Henry Dunant is the founder of Red Cross. Nowadays, people are aware of this importance of first aid techniques. These techniques can reduce any harm to people who are in accidents. These techniques can sometimes spell indifference between life and death. In general, the objectives of first aid are the following. To preserve or save a life. To relieve or alleviate suffering or pain. And to minimize injuries and promote recovery. A well-stocked first aid kit is very important at home in school, and in the workplace. What comprises a first aid kit? The following materials should be present in a first aid kit. First aid manual, compressed dressings, sterile gauze bags, 
adhesive bandages, roller bandages, triangular bandage, adhesive cloth tape, antiseptic solution, antibiotic cream, aspirin, hydrocortisone cream, scissors, thermometer, tweezers, alcohol wipes, extra prescription medications, calamine lotion, and most importantly, the list of emergency numbers. Now, let's talk about the roles, responsibilities, and characteristics of a good first aider. There are five characteristics of a good first aider. You can easily remember them by using the mnemonic CAPS. These five characteristics of a good first aider are kind and calm, alert and watchful, ingenuous, polite, and sensitive. Gentle hands will let the victim not feel fear or become panicked. A good first aider must be watchful not only on the victim but also on his or her surroundings. A good first aider must know how to apply first aid to the victim with minimal resources, with or without equipment. He or she must improvise and make use of what is available while giving the best possible care to the patient. A good first aider should be tactful. He or she should not cause panic or fear, which may just worsen the condition of the patient. The first aider should make the patient feel comfortable and at ease. There are also other characteristics of a first aider that we may consider. These are the following. Fast in decision making and efficient and confident. A good first aider should be quick to perform actions, but he or she should still be careful to avoid errors. Because time is vital in giving first aid, the first aider must be efficient by not wasting time. According to the Philippine National Red Cross, the first aider serves as the first link to survival. He or she acts like a bridge or connection between the victim and the medical professional. The first aider does not take the place of a medical professional. His or her duty ends once the medical assistance has arrived. Now, let's have a quick review and write your answers on your paper. What is the initial, immediate, and temporary treatment given to the sick or injured person by a non-expert until medical assistance has arrived? What is this kit that is very important thing at home, in school, and in the workplace? Who is the founder of Red Cross? Now, let's check your answers. The initial, immediate, and temporary treatment given to the sick or injured person by a non-expert until medical assistance has arrived is first aid. The very important thing to have at home, in school, and in the workplace is the first aid kit. Lastly, the founder of the Red Cross is Henry Dunant. Congratulations class! I hope you enjoyed today's discussion. Once again, I am Miss Kate and always remember that knowledge of first aid is crucial to an individual at times of accidents or emergencies. It gives you tools to prevent the situation from becoming worse. By being able to provide basic care, you can stabilize a patient until emergency medical services arrive. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next lesson. Be good and do good. God bless everyone.